you. Okay. Is it agreed that you do three minutes? Okay. Majority Leader, can you move the motion? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that taking into consideration the findings of the committee on appointments in its second report on the vetting of the nominees for appointment to the offices of cabinet secretaries laid on the top of the house today wednesday 7th august 2024 morning sitting and pursuant to the provisions of article 152 2 of the constitution and sections 3 and 8 of the public appointments parliamentary approval act of 2011 this house approves the appointment of the following persons as cabinet secretaries one the honorable professor kidura kindiki egh Ministry of Interior and National Administration. Two, Dr. Deborah Mlongo Barasa, Ministry of Health. Three, Honorable Alice Wahome, EGH, Ministry of Lands, Public Works, Housing and Urban Development. Four, Mr. Julius Migos Ogamba, EBS, Ministry of Education. Five, the Honorable Roslinda Soipan Tuya, EGH, Ministry of Defense. Six, Dr. Andrew Mwehia Karanja, Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development. Seven, the Honorable Aden Bare Duale, EGH, Ministry of Environment, Climate Change and Forestry. Eight, Mr. Eric Murevi Muga. Ministry of Water, Sanitation and Irrigation. Nine, Mr. Davis Chirchir, EGH, Ministry of Roads and Transport. Ten, Dr. Margaret Nyamburandungu, Ministry of Information, Communication and the Digital Economy. Eleven, the Honorable John Mbadi Ngongo, EGH, the National Treasury and Economic Planning. Five, the Honorable Salim Mvuria Mgala, EGH, Ministry of Investments, Trade and Industry. Thirteen, Ms. Rebecca Miano, EGH, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife. Fourteen, the Honorable James Opio Wandai, EGH, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Energy and Petroleum. Fifteen, the Honorable Ones Onesimus Kipchumba Murkomen, EGH, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Youth Affairs, Creative Economy and Sports. Sixteen, the Honorable Hassan Ali Joho, EGH, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Mining, Blue Economy and Maritime Affairs. Seventeen, the Honorable Dr. Alfred Nganga Mutua, EGH, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Labor and Social Protection. 18, the Honorable Wycliffe Ambetsa Oparanya, EGH. Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Cooperatives and Micro, Small and Medium Enterprise Develop Development. 19, is the Honorable Justice Bidan Njoka Muturi, EGH. Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Public Service and Human Capital Development. Two, that the committee rejects, recommends the rejection of the appointment of Ms. Taylor Soy Langat as a cabinet secretary, Ministry of Gender, Culture, the Arts and Heritage. Honorable Speaker, allow me, Honorable Speaker, having read that, to take this opportunity, Honorable Speaker, to first thank you as a chair of the appointments committee of this house and all the 20 members, with the exception of the Omabo Opio Wandai, who for obvious reasons could not sit in a committee that was vetting names among, that uh, had among us those names to be vetted his own name. And therefore, as members, we will note from the report, the very bulky report that I tabled this morning, the Omabo Opio Wandai only appeared before the committee as a nominee to be uh, considered for appointment as cabinet secretary for energy and petroleum and the 20 members honorable speaker 
including yourself, who sat through from Thursday 8 a.m. on our speaker. Members know that you are checking in at County Hall at 7 in the morning, all the way at times to as late as 10.30 p.m. And our speaker, allow me to take this opportunity to profoundly thank you and all the members of this committee for the commitment and diligence and professionalism that all the members of the committee showed in the consideration of all these nominees. Honorable Speaker, the report that I tabled this morning contains all the proceedings of the committee on appointments during the approval hearings of the 20 persons who had been nominated for appointment as cabinet secretaries of the state and ministerial portfolios in the cabinet of the government of Kenya as forwarded by His Excellency the President and communicated by yourself, Honorable Speaker, on Tuesday 23rd and Wednesday 24th of July. And Honorable Speaker, the names are as read out. And Honorable Speaker, the report, Honorable Speaker, if you can protect me from the loud consultations, the report, Honorable Speaker, was saying details in great detail what we were able to engage each of the nominees on. The committee's report also has a retinue of all that was said in the committee based on what the nominees filled up in their written, handwritten questionnaire from their educational background, their professional background, places they have worked in, their work experience. And Honorable Speaker, including their net worth, and I know Honorable Speaker, the question of net worth is what became very popular with Kenyans and especially our friends and colleagues in the fourth estate. Order, honorable members, order. This Kamukunji here, honorable order. speaker. Order. Order, David Speaker and your team. Sioi, take your seats. Take your seats, honorable members. Honorable members, if there is a motion that you require to pay attention to, order the member lecturing uh, others in the the walkway members one of the most important constitutional responsibilities you carry that was given to this house is that the president cannot sit in state house and nominate persons to office of minister or cabinet secretary without your approval this is order Kiborek. This is one of your most important responsibilities to discharge in this country, apart from dealing with appropriations and budget. I would expect, and I expect nothing less, order decay. I expect nothing less, and Osoro, you are the chief whip. You should be the last to cause disorder. I want to hear each other in silence. I want us to hear your views on the people who are going to assist the president to run this country. I want the country to hear you on what you are handing over to the president to work with. And we cannot do that by engaging in many kamkunjis all over the, the, the floor of the house. Those members, the, the chair cannot curtail you from consulting. I have allowed you to use the speaker's recess room to go and consult if you wish. But let's hear the moving of this motion, the debating of this motion with order, a reasonable degree of silence in the house. The country is watching you. And if the majority leader is speaker and nobody's even hearing him, then when you stand to contribute, what are you going to do? Don't degenerate to a level where, you know, we used to have in this house. A motion as important as this is moved and a member stands up to attack his local chief. Instead of contributing to the motion, majority leader proceed. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Speaker was at the point of saying that the committee considered the curriculum vitae of all these nominees 
that uh, stipulated where they each went to school. And I was speaker on a light note. Many people out there, including members of parliament, believed that there are some of the nominees who had not uh, attained the requisite academic qualifications. And I want to confirm to this house that indeed all the nominees from the curriculum vitae and the engagement with the committee indicated that they had the requisite qualifications. Uh, and also noting, Honorable Speaker, that uh, our laws do not stipulate any particular quali academic qualifications. But even those that Kenyans had a very interesting engagement on, like the Honorable Ali Hassan Joho, he was able to, in a very good manner, exhibit to the country how he was inspired by Professor Ali Mazrui to pursue education having not performed well at KCSE or at high school level. And indeed, Honorable Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to commend not just Professor Ali Mazrui, but the later day Mazrui in Ali Hassan Joho, who has now also become a great inspiration to many Kenyans, Honorable Speaker. It is not every other Kenyan who sits examinations at KCSE level or at all levels and qualifies to join an institution of higher learning. But right from the example we were given of Professor Ali Mazrui to the Ali Hassan Joho of today, he's, a, he's exhibited to our young people that many of our own constituents, Honorable Speaker, a good proportion and a good percentage of our own constituents seat KCSE and do not qualify to join university, that that does not mark the end of your life. That not qualifying to join university at Form 4 should not mark an end to your pursuit to better yourself and for academic excellence. The Honorable Ali Hassan Joho exhibited the committee that is now pursuing a master's degree at Harvard University in the Kennedy School of Administration and is commendable Honorable Speaker and I want to commend the Honorable Ali Hassan Joho for not just being nominated, but also for exhibiting to Kenyans that he can also serve as an, as an inspiration to younger Kenyans who should now know that you can uh, get on a path for academic excellence, even having not performed so well at KCPE. Honorable Speaker, besides considering their CVs, the committee also invited the public to submit memoranda by way of written statements on oath or affidavits as is stipulated in our constitution and our laws on our speaker in the public appointments act on the suitability of each of the nominees and our speaker to this end the committee received a total of 837 memoranda and I must thank the many Kenyans who submitted this huge number of memoranda and it tells you that indeed public participation was not superfluous, was not for the sake of it that Kenyans in their numbers did submit written memoranda. However, Honorable Speaker, 123 of these were hand delivered and 714 were submitted by email. Honorable Speaker, Section 6.9 of the Public uh, Appointments Parliamentary Approval Act provides that any person may, prior to the approval hearing, by written statement on oath, provide the clerk with evidence. Honorable Speaker, it's important for members to note that and members of the public also, that it must be written statement on oath or an affidavit and provide evidence contesting the stability of a candidate to hold the office to which the candidate has been nominated. Honorable Speaker, out of the memoranda su submitted, 181 complied with section 6, subsection 9 of the Act, while 656 were not in the form of aff affidavits, hence did not meet the requisite threshold as per the law. Moreover, Honorable Speaker, out of the 656, some were actually in support of the nominees, and therefore inadmissible because the law expects this section 6 sub article, uh, subsection 9 